Okay, if we look at uh, the uh, tuna fishery, uh, we are in the process of uh, certifying uh, some of the tuna fisheries that's happening in the uh, Maldives. Especially uh, Skipjack Polar Line tuna fishery has been certified, MSC certified. That means uh, the uh, fishermen will be getting a better price for the skipjack they caught by Poland Line. We are also in the process of uh, certifying other fishery like the large yellowfin handline fishery and also Poland Line tuna fishery. If you look at the fishing activities that's happening, it's very targeted, it's caught one by one, and there are no discards in the fishery. Uh, the bycatch they take are usually good fish that they can sell at the fish market and also consumed on the islands. Uh, so there is zero discard in this fishery and you find the fishermen themselves, a lot of fishermen themselves are engaged in the fishery. So we have about a thousand uh, pollen line and hand line boats operating in the country. And each of these boats employ on average about 15 fishermen. So directly about 15,000 fishermen are working on the boats. Plus we have several people that are engaged in fish processing activities, uh, preservation activities, and also in other uh, works related to the fishery. So tuna fishery is providing a lot of employment to communities across the Maldives. Now what I'm trying to look at is the change in the uh, vessel that's used for pollen line operation and also hand line operation. Initially, even uh, at the beginning of the presentation, I, sh I showed you uh, small boats, sailing boats that's uh, used for pole and line in the Maldives. So this is what a sailing boat that's used for pole and line in the past looks like, looked like. So these are usually small boats operated by maybe three or four people operating very close to the coastal waters. And then, of course, if there is no wind, they have to punt or they need to use the oars. So there is always the danger that if they venture too far away from the island, they cannot come back to the island. Most of the fishing activities were one day fishing activity, going out in the morning and coming back in the evening. So in the 1970s, uh, these sailing boats were being transformed into what we call mechanized boats. So in the 1974, the first mechanized, uh, mechanization of the fishing vessels started. Uh, and between 1975 and 1977, uh, you find more than 400 of these previously sailing boats were converted to mechanized boats and uh, they were using smaller engines, like 22 to 30 horsepower engines. And this, began actual transformation of the fishery. During that time, uh, when you look at the boats, the real disadvantage was only about four people could operate their pollen line. You find uh, them standing on the fishing platform at the back of the boat, uh, one person behind the other on each side, so maximum about four poles could be operated because the boats were small and the fishing platform was small. And the person who is operating the boat is also standing in the same place. And the engine has to be operated by a different person. The controls were not with the person who is actually steering the boat. So you have a traditional masdoni looking like this with a lot of limitations. The deck was also open. So <clears throat> first what they did was they covered the deck so that when there is waves, the water doesn't get into the boat. It uh, is uh, prevented from capsizing. So 
initially when the traditional fishing vessel started, they had an open uh, deck boat. They slowly converted so that it, the deck will be covered. Then uh, what happened is fishermen and also the government saw there is a lot of uh, disadvantages with the traditional boat. So they started developing specially designed boat for pole and line fishing operation that looked like this. And this was called Mark II Mastoni. And uh, these were initially uh, 40 feet long and by mid 1970s there was a big project to develop these vessels and introduce to the fish, uh, fishery. Now the person operating the boat is still at the back of the boat, but now he has control of the engine. He can actually uh, operate the engine. You don't need another person to operate the engine. The fishing platform was a little wider, so you can have more people uh, operating the actual pole and line gear. Of course, the deck was covered, and uh, there was less chance of capsizing this. Then, of course, people started modifying their boats and started introducing shelters to their boats. And still, people, a uh, lot of fishermen thought this was not a very beautiful design. So the Maldivian fishermen still continued to like their traditional design of the boat. And they, even uh, today, some islands are building these traditional boats uh, with wood and used for pole and line fishing operations. So slowly they start introducing the shelters because all this time the fishermen were uh, exposed to the elements. If there is hot sun, they were sitting in the hot sun. If there is a lot of rain or rough sea, they were sitting in that. So with the introduction of second generation Dorney, without a shelter, the fishermen thought we need to change this. We, we need to uh, have shelters on the boat so that they could keep their belongings and also uh, take shelter during bad weather. Then, of course, with the modern boat, modern boat are usually made from fiberglass, big boats. Uh, these, many of them are about 100 feet long, and they have very big engines. Initially, when we started, we had something like 20 horsepower engines. Uh, but now, today, when we look at the big boats operating down south, uh, you find big engines like 650 horsepower engines on these boats. Uh, it's common to find uh, 300 to uh, 400 horsepower engines on many of the fishing vessels. Now, of course, they have proper shelter. They can stay out longer. And you find some boats have even air conditioning on it. So the rooms are air conditioned, the fishermen are living in style. So they have proper bunks. Again, when we talk to the fishermen uh, why they are investing so much in this type of boats, their answer is by investing in better facilities for the fishermen, they are able to attract good, experienced fishermen to work on their boats. So that is why uh, they are investing so much on this. So they have proper meals, uh, fresh water for uh, taking a bath. And of course, some boats now have uh, desalination plants so they can make their own uh, fresh water. In order to encourage uh, and promote fishing activities in the Maldives, we find that the government is continuously maintaining fish aggregating device around Maldives. Because once the fish aggregating devices were introduced in the 1980s, we found that the catch increased very much. So it had a very positive impact on the fishery itself. Mechanization and the introduction of fish aggregating devices improved the catch in the Maldives. So the government is maintaining 50 FADs deployed across the Maldives. And they have ice plants, again built across the Maldives by various companies that's providing ice for the fishermen. 
And also you have now proper harbor in many of the islands to uh, provide the needed protection from bad weather to the fishing vessels. And there are collector vessels that are buying fish from the fishermen, again located at strategic places across the country wherever fishing is good. So when the fishing is better in one area, these collector vessels will travel to those areas, buy fish from them, from the fishermen operating in those areas. Because sometimes for the fishermen to come all the way to a processing plant or a freezing plant to sell their catch, it is difficult. Of course, there are ways uh, to introduce new boats uh, or new investments to the fishermen uh, fishing operations or fishery activities in the country by providing soft loans.